All right, let's take a look at the respiratory system. So the primary function of the respiratory system is to facilitate gas exchange between the body and the external environment and to provide oxygen to the body by working with the cardiovascular system. Oxygen diffuses into the body through the lungs and is sent throughout the body by the circulatory system. Carbon dioxide is returned to the lungs by the circulatory system and the lungs release it to the environment. Okay, so like all of our science videos, we have some questions and then we're gonna, those are gonna be like the focus of the video is answering these questions. And then at the end, I'll have these same questions put up and then you can answer them yourself. And if you need any help, then you go back into the video, get the answers and that's how learning happens. Um, so some of the stuff we're gonna cover, what's the largest organ of the respiratory system? You definitely need to know that. Uh, what moves mucus out of the lungs? What is the order for the pathway of air into the body? That's a very, very common question that we want to be familiar with. Um, what in cystic fibrosis leads to difficulty breathing and frequent lung infections? And the effect that acidosis has on ventilation rate. Okay. So this is the pathway of the air into the body. So um, the mnemonic, please leave the breath alone uh is perhaps useful uh, it is for a lot of people and that just stands for pharynx larynx trachea bronchi alveoli all right so as we go through this um we'll just kind of describe this process out a little bit so air first enters the body through the pharynx the epiglottis covers the entrance to the pharynx while swallowing Air then passes through the larynx, which is the voice box, and enters the trachea, which is the windpipe. The trachea splits into two bronchi, which are the main passageways to the left and right lung. The trachea allows air to flow between the lungs and the oral or nasal passageways. Okay, so again, there's that mnemonic that you might want to memorize, but either way, we definitely need to know this order of the pathway of air into the body. Uh, you will be tested on it. So the lungs are the largest organ of the respiratory system, and that relates to what I believe was our first question. Yeah, so first bullet point there, what is the largest organ of the respiratory system? It's the lungs. Uh, we definitely need to be familiar with that. The exchange of carbon dioxide for oxygen at the alveoli relies on simple diffusion. The walls of the alveoli are only one cell thick. This maximizes diffusion rate and then there are millions of alveoli in the lung. Surfactant reduces surface tension to prevent lung collapse. That's the significance of it. The cilia move mucus and other particulates out of the lung, and that relates to another question. There it is, the second bullet point. What moves mucus and other particulates out of the lung? Cilia, okay. And then we'll move on here to uh, ventilation rate. <clears throat> An increase in carbon dioxide concentration in the blood would lead to a decrease in blood pH and then lead to an increase in the ventilation rate. A decrease in carbon dioxide concentration in the blood would lead to a decrease in ventilation rate. Okay, so those, con those concepts are extremely important. Um, as we look at... Uh, in acidosis, uh, the concentration of carbon dioxide is high. An increase in protons decreases the pH of blood. This causes acidosis and leads to an increase in ventilation rate. Okay, so that one is all the way down on uh, bullet point five. What impact does acidosis have on ventilation rate? Okay. Moving on, alkalosis, also a common test question, or at least one of the multiple choice options that you'll end up having to be familiar with to answer correctly. Uh, alkalosis has a low concentration of carbon dioxide, a decreased concentration of protons, an increased pH of blood, and a decrease 
in the ventilation rate. So very different than acidosis. Uh, vital capacity refers to the amount of air that can be inhaled and exhaled with effort. Tidal volume is the amount of air inhaled and exhaled during normal breathing. And inspiratory reserve volume refers to the amount of air that can be forcibly inhaled. So you need to be familiar with, with all of those. Uh, and it, additionally, there's also expiratory reserve volume, and that's the amount of air that can be forcibly exhaled. All right, as we look at lung function, the thick mucus and cystic fibrosis leads to difficulty breathing and frequent lung infections. The breathing difficulty leads to decreased efficiency in gas exchange. Due to breathing being more difficult, the respiratory system must work harder to bring in air, carbon dioxide, and lactic acid are released, leading to a drop in pH. Okay. So as far as the question though, with cystic fibrosis, um, you can see that on bullet point four, blank and cystic fibrosis leads to difficulty breathing and frequent lung infections, right? And so it was like the very first thing I said there, which is the thick mucus and cystic fibrosis is what leads to all of this. Okay, a couple other terms that we want to be familiar with that all lead to uh, lung function impediment. Uh, surfactant insufficiency results from a mutation in surfactant proteins and is commonly found in newborns. If you remember from the beginning of this video, uh, surfactant reduces surface tension to prevent lung collapse. Uh, influenza is caused by a coronavirus coronavirus. That would be really the main point that you want to know on influenza. Uh, tuberculosis is caused by mycobacterium. If untreated, mycobacterium tuberculosis can lead to scarring of the lungs. Prolonged smoking or exposure to others who smoke can lead to emphysema. Emphysema involves breakdown of the alveoli and damage to the cilia. And then finally, asthma is characterized by inflammation and a subsequent narrowing of the airway that makes breathing more difficult. Okay, so that's the video on respiratory system. And then we can we go back to these questions, right? So these were all addressed in the video. So I hope you'll take a second here to go through these questions uh, one more time. They're important concepts to make sure that we have down um, so that we can ace the respiratory part of the test.